Hello, I'm Atuba George and I bless God for his wisdom and ability and the opportunity to bring his word to you today. Praise God. Hey, we are in the first week of the month of April. Praise God. And God who commanded us go bear fruit and we've said yes to him. And that's exactly what we're doing this month. So I pray for you today that everything you need to bear fruit, everything you need to obey the Lord today, let it be supplied you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now listen, on this broadcast, we bring you truth, consistent truth. You know, we do these videos and we put it up there on, on, on YouTube. That any time you can go search for a topic and sit down and listen and listen and listen and you will grow. Praise God. Yes, you will. All the content we have, they are for your growth. And if you'll be diligent enough to follow them, it will help you. It will help you greatly. Understanding God is the most important thing you need in your life. I believe as we go on in this series, you, would, um, you will get to understand what I mean by that. Praise God. Now, before going to today's broadcast, are you ready to call forth your daily bread? It's a demand that we ask of God every day on this broadcast because Jesus commanded us to do so. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you ready? Join me right now in faith and demand. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread it is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus you know where our text is we are talking about the wisdom of god's word and our text is from first peter why did we choose first peter because peter said something so important and, and you know what we keep repeating this thing so it will stick in your heart. We keep repeating it and repeating it until this scripture stays in your heart and, and until you understand what God is saying in it. Because sometimes, I'll tell you the truth, you may read a particular scripture for many times before you get it. Now, what do you mean before you get it? Is it that you don't, you're so dull you didn't get it? No, until God speaks to you. See, that's the whole essence of the scriptures. They are platforms or they are environment, environment that create an atmosphere for God to speak to you. That's the whole essence of the Bible. That's the whole essence of scriptures. That's the whole essence of every writing. And I'm not going to tell you that only read the Bible, don't read any other book. No, I won't tell you that because that's limiting. See, you know, sometimes, especially pastors, you know, pastors are scared for their people. See, but one thing we forget is the real shepherd is Jesus. And he knows how to keep his own. He knows. So as, as, as a human pastor, you are thinking, oh, no, don't go this way. Go this way. Teach God's children the truth. And allow truth himself to guide them. Now, if you teach God's children the truth that you know, and you are afraid to let them be guided by truth himself, you have claimed them to be your own, not his own. You see? Now, this is the reason we, I, you've heard me make, make some statements that look, oh, you know, for example, when I say, um, get it right, the Bible is not the word of God. Now, the Bible contains the word of God, but the Bible is not the word of God. Now, when I say things like that, I'm not underwriting the Bible, not at all. And understand me. And you've heard me say something like the Bible can become an idol. Yes, I said so. And it's the same thing. I'm not saying put away the Bible. I'm saying 
be careful to understand what the Bible is saying. Not what people are saying about the Bible. You know, it's, it's a material. You've heard me define what the Bible is. And I've, I've told you this. The Bible is, simply this is the definition of the Bible. It's a compendium of testimonies of people who walked with God. Who received the word of God. What they did with the word of God they received. Tell us how they reacted to the word of God. Whether they reacted well or not. And what their end became. That's what the Bible is. It's a compendium of stories. A compendium of testimonies. Every story you see in the Bible is simply saying one thing. People interacted with God. And when I say they interacted with God, they interacted with the word of God. And because of their interaction with the word of God, this is what their life became. So this whole compendium was put together to guide us. And let me tell you one truth. It wasn't put together by God like people think. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why do I have to say this that I'm telling you now? Because of the mentality a lot of pastors have passed down to people. So they look at this particular King James Bible now. You get what I'm saying? From which many other translations we have came from. You know that, right? Because you have Genesis to Revelation. So many translations of the Bible you see, just the language different. You have Genesis to Revelation. So, but the first Bible that uh, gave us Genesis to Revelation, 66 books, is the King James Bible. And, and you know, go read the story, the history of how the King James Bible came about. Oh, there were holy men who canonized the Bible. Now, how holy were these men? Were they monks? Were they men filled with the Holy Ghost? You see, we have this idea that people have created in our minds. Like, like they received this thing from heaven. Some even believe that they wrote it. So they received this thing by revelation and they began to write the book of Genesis. And God began to speak to them and they were writing and they finished the book of Genesis. No, sir. All these stories existed. There were Bibles that existed before the King James Version. What do I mean? There are Bibles that existed before the 66 books. And men read those books and they walked in power. Many of the four fathers who preached the gospel, we read about John Knox, we read about uh, many of these men didn't have the King James Bible because the King James Bible came either about or after them. But they had Bibles they were reading. You understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> Praise God. Yes, they did. And they walked in so much power and authority. But they didn't have the King James Bible. So King James came and, and thought of you go read the story this is not a history class <laughs> but I, i'm bringing this to you to stir up your mind i said okay thank god for google today you can search out things don't just take one opinion read several and then you are wise believe that you are wise so when you sample one two three you should be able to draw out truth from it because the Bible even says that in the, in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. So it's the same thing. You pick from here, pick from here. All saying the same thing. In different ways. You will see the truth in between. Now, there's a recent movie on Netflix talking about um, Moses, the... the it's, I think it's titled the Testament, the, the story of Moses and how he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now, if, you know, if you've seen that movie, you notice that they made it like a documentary, okay? And you had the, they didn't just use the Bible as their reference. They used the Bible, they used the Quran, they used some Jewish materials. And then they had all these people, scholars, both... Um, a Baptist uh, pastor or professor or something like that. And then they had um, a Jewish man. They had a, a, a Muslim. Uh, 
an Islamic scholar, all did this documentary and they, they were looking at the different stories from different materials. And then they got all these things to produce this movie. Story here, story here, story here. They were telling the same story. How Moses was born and how God used him to bring out the children of Israel. Now, truth be told, I've said this on this broadcast many times. When, when one person is writing, you need to know from the perspective he's writing. He's writing, you know, um, you need to know the perspective he's writing from. Now, a man can have his focus on something and then he's telling a story. Now, that, this is why you have the four Gospels, the Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? And out of these four people that wrote the Gospel, only two were eyewitnesses. So you have Matthew and then you have John. They were the only two eyewitnesses. Mark was not a disciple of Jesus. Probably Mark didn't even meet Jesus physically. Luke didn't meet Jesus physically. Now, Mark was one of the early um, disciples that got born again, and he was related to uh, Barnabas. When I mean related to Barnabas, he was Barnabas' soul. You understand what I'm talking about? And then he, he followed them on their first missionary journey, Barnabas and Paul. You know the story if you read the book of Acts. And then he left them along the way and went back. Actually, it was Mark. The, the, uh, his name was John Mark, the writer of the book of Mark. He was the one that caused the split between Paul and Barnabas. Now that's, that's now history. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when you read that, for example, did God say they should, um, they should split? I've talked about that some weeks ago on this broadcast. But this is history. This is what happened. Okay, And Barnabas took Mark and Mark grew and just felt, hey, I think, why do you think they, they all were writing these stories? Now, Matthew wrote, now I, I really don't know which one came first, but I suspect, I say I suspect because I can't say I'm an, an authority head on this. I suspect John came last. Okay, now, so Matthew wrote his story and Mark wrote his story. And when you read the two books you would notice that some things are here some things are here now they are telling the story of something that happened and remember now even though um matthew was there with, walking with jesus of course he couldn't have been with jesus everywhere you understand what i'm saying so there are even things that he too was told ah see what happened to do and then also realize that they were not writing these things as jesus was carrying them out they were right, they wrote these things many years after Jesus. Now when I say many years, 30, 40, 50 years after Jesus. So we didn't have the Bible, you know, that's, that's the thing. When, you know, when sometimes you look at some things, especially people who promote the Bible as the... Uh, how do I put it now? There are, there are pastors or people who claim to be teachers. I say claim to be teachers because it's important we know who uh, a teacher is and what they are called to teach. See, there are people who teach Bible. Now those ones are not called. Hear me? Because God will not call someone to teach the Bible. No, sir. He doesn't. There is no calling like that. I mean, Bible teacher. Nah. There is none. God never calls anybody to teach the Bible. It's a vocation you can pick up because you're intelligent. So you can pick up that vocation. But God calls people to teach his word. Now you see where I'm going to. Yeah, God calls people to teach his word. Now, if you don't know the difference between these two people, you will mistake a Bible teacher for a word teacher. Now, Bible teachers most times are not accurate but they are accurate in scriptures as an academic um, material 
So they, they can take anything and prove it from scriptures. But that doesn't mean that they are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? It doesn't mean that they are right. But a word teacher, a word teacher has got to be anointed because you can't teach the word by studying it. Ah, you can't. Any, any true teacher of the word of God knows this. You don't teach the word of God by studying it. You teach it by the anointing. What do I mean by the anointing? It comes to you by revelation. Yeah. It comes by revelation. So a, a Bible teacher does not really have to depend on the Holy Spirit to teach. So he must be well informed. So he must study his Bible very well. He must take up topics and find every scripture relating to that topic. Now that's some amount of work they do. Give it to them. I hear what I'm saying. But then a word teacher doesn't necessarily need to even be educated. I want you to understand what I'm saying. He may not even go to school. So he may not even know how to blend um, Revelation to Genesis. He may not know. But the moment he starts teaching, you that is educated will be doing the blending. If you know. So a Bible teacher, when he sits under a word teacher, his life will be profitable. Because the word teacher will help him greatly. Okay? And then... A Bible teacher can actually help a word teacher also. How? By giving him the scriptures. He say, hey, oh, now when, it, when, it, when, it, when, it, when a word teacher is, is teaching, a Bible teacher can confuse you. Yes. A Bible teacher can confuse you. A word teacher, his job is to tell the mind of God and explain it. So a word teacher, the, the, the ministry of the teacher and the ministry of the prophetic, they are very much alike. So a... One who's called to teach the word of God can easily flow in the prophetic because truly his job is in the prophetic. Now people know our associate prophets to be people who... Um, who are telling people's life history and prophesying to them in terms of I, I can see, I, I hear, you know, now that's what people call prophets or they say, oh, something is going to happen in the future. Okay, now that's what people term as prophets, so the prophetic ministry. And then the other, the lower, lowest part of the prophetic where you, you function in word of knowledge. And the fact that you function in word of knowledge a lot doesn't make you a prophet either. You heard me say these things before. Now, let's not go there. Let's focus on what I'm talking to you about. I'm, I'm concentrating on the word teacher, okay? Now, the one who's called to teach the word of God, what is his assignment? His assignment is to receive from the Holy Spirit the mind of God and explain it. A prophet can tell you, rain is going to come in three years' time. And it's going to be so heavy. Speaking prophetically now. A word teacher will go beyond that and will tell you how to prepare for the rain. And in doing so, he will bring past events and these things can happen prophetically. <laughs> and when I mean by the Spirit of God. So, like I said, he may not necessarily know the Bible. It's an advantage when a word teacher, because every one of us are called. I mean, God have given you a brain. So it's an advantage to you when you sit down and study the scriptures. It will really help your ministry. Now, how will it help your ministry? You, you flow better with what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. But then also, that can become dangerous to you too. Especially when you study the Bible through the eyes of other people, it can become a limitation in your heart. And you get what I'm saying? So, for example, you know, many things people have come up to say, many things people have come up. Now you hear 
uh, most preachers they, they've come up to say things like oh um, we are not supposed to tithe now you know anytime we are just hit on tithing why because that's something god have given to me to teach yeah praise god so they hit on the tithe now when, when people when you hear people say uh, we're not supposed to tithe listening to them very well they are not word teachers they are bible teachers i can't be about you my time is up it's <laughs> good i've just seen that my time is up uh, now listen we're going to continue from here tomorrow because i don't want to exceed um our time on this so ah, this is not a good place to stop but we have to praise god father i bless you your glory fills our hearts and because you've commanded us to bear fruit lord we walk in this instruction in jesus mighty name i pray for everyone today as they go out they bear fruits your kind of fruits in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.